Picture this, it's a cool, crisp evening, and you find yourself nestled in the dimly lit embrace of a vintage movie theater, the scent of buttered popcorn wafting through the air. The year is 1974, and you're about to embark on a cinematic journey like no other. The film that graces the silver screen before you is none other than Phantom of the Paradise. The anticipation in the room is palpable, a symphony of whispers and hushed excitement. As the opening credits roll and the haunting melodies fill the theater, you can't help but be drawn into the dark and enigmatic world of this cult classic. From the moment the Phantom's disfigured face is unveiled to the electrifying performances at the Paradise, every frame of this movie etches itself into your memory. Perhaps you remember the seductive allure of Swan, the enigmatic record producer, or the tragic beauty of Phoenix, the aspiring singer. Or maybe it's the unforgettable tunes that have eternally etched their melodies into your soul. Phantom of the Paradise is a film that leaves an indelible mark, a timeless tale of love, ambition, and the price of fame. Now, as we delve into some random facts about this iconic film, Prepare to be transported back to that first encounter, to those memorable moments that have stayed with you all these years. Strap in for a journey through the fascinating trivia and behind-the-scenes secrets of Phantom of the Paradise, a movie that continues to captivate and enchant audiences to this day. And so, without further ado, let's uncover the hidden gems of Phantom of the Paradise. Bird motifs in Phantom of the Paradise in the 1974 movie Phantom of the Paradise. Directed by Brian De Palma, birds take flight as significant motifs throughout the film. From character names to costumes, and even a record label logo, the avian theme weaves its feathers into the narrative. The characters Phoenix and Swan are at the forefront of this bird symbolism. Phoenix, played by Jessica Harper, embodies the image of a bird reborn from its ashes, echoing the mythical Phoenix. Swan, portrayed by Paul Williams, wears his name like a mantle, signifying grace and beauty similar to a swan in a serene lake. The Phantom's bird-like costume further underscores this theme. With its wings and beak-like mask, it's a visual manifestation of his inner turmoil and longing. Phoenix, dressed after her debut appearance, also flaunts feathers, symbolizing her transformation and freedom as an artist. Even Beef, a flamboyant rock star in the movie, gets in on the act with his bird-like tail during his performance. A logo for Death Records, the fictional record label in the film, features a bird tying together the avian motifs in the world of music and fame. In this rock opera spectacle, birds serve as a visual and symbolic thread that runs through the story, connecting characters and their journeys. Phantom of the Paradise uses these bird motifs to infuse deeper meaning into its tale of love, ambition, and the dark side of the music industry. This avian symbolism provides an added layer of depth and intrigue to an already mesmerizing cinematic experience. From the names of characters to the design of costumes and record labels, birds are a constant presence, enriching the storytelling and leaving their mark on the audience. And so, in Phantom of the Paradise, the birds soar both in the background and at the forefront, leaving us with a film that's not only visually striking but also thematically rich. In the 1974 movie Phantom of the Paradise, there's an interesting tidbit about the character Swan, played by Paul Williams, and his manipulation of Winslow Leach's voice, portrayed by William Finley. When Swan is adjusting Winslow's voice, it's actually Paul Williams singing, not William Finley. This adds a subtle in-joke when Swan later declares that the voice is perfect. Additionally, according to Danny Peary's book Cult Movies 2, the film was originally intended to be titled simply The Phantom. However, King Features Syndicate, the syndicators of the Phantom comic strip, insisted that the film have a longer title to avoid confusion with their copyrighted character. Lastly, in the film's ending sequence during Swan and Phoenix's wedding, you may have noticed dancing girls dressed as crows or blackbirds. Surprisingly, these dancers were actually cheerleaders from a Texas college near where the film was shot. They weren't too thrilled with their costumes, which consisted of skimpy string bikinis with black feathers covering their breasts, and black underwear with a bunch of black feathers in the center front. The dancers felt that the feathers resembled pubic hair, and that the costumes were too revealing. In response, the costume designer hastily added more feathers to ease their concerns. These intriguing behind-the-scenes details shed light on the making of Phantom of the Paradise, a cult classic from 1974 that continues to captivate audiences with its unique blend of music and dark humor. 
This film is a fascinating journey into the world of rock and roll and the price of fame, where even the smallest details have their own stories. In the 1974 movie Phantom of the Paradise, there's a fascinating behind-the-scenes tidbit related to the character Winslow Leach, also known as the Phantom. This character's name was actually inspired by director Brian De Palma's mentor, Wilford Leach. It's a subtle nod to the influence and guidance that Wilford Leach provided to De Palma during the making of the film. Now, let's talk about a rather dramatic moment during the filming of Phantom of the Paradise. In the scene where Jared Graham's character performs life at last, he was terribly ill that day. In fact, he was so sick that he could hardly walk. Despite his illness, Graham managed to give a convincing performance, which adds an intriguing layer of dedication to the movie. And here's another thrilling fact about the film. According to William Finley, who portrayed Winslow Leach, the scene where his character is disfigured in a record press was filmed in a real pressing plant. Specifically, it was an injection molding press at an ideal toy company plant. Finley had concerns about his safety, but the crew assured him the machine was safe. However, things took an unexpected turn. The press, fitted with foam pads resembling casting molds, had chocks placed in the center to prevent it from closing completely. Unfortunately, the machine's power gradually crushed the chocks. Finley's quick thinking and timing saved him from serious injury as he pulled his head out just in time. His scream in the scene was genuine, not an act. These behind-the-scenes details shed light on the dedication and risks taken during the making of Phantom of the Paradise, making it a film with a memorable history both in front of and behind the camera. In 1974, the movie Phantom of the Paradise faced a tough run at the box office. It was a flop almost everywhere in North America, except for one place, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. In Winnipeg, the film stayed on the screens for months, defying the trend of its lackluster performance elsewhere. One interesting detail in the film is the Death Records logo. Originally planned to be the Swan Song label, the Death Records logo is optically printed over it at several points in the movie, adding a unique touch to the visual narrative. Another intriguing aspect of the film is the electronic room where Winslow Leach composes his cantata, and where Swan restores his voice. This room is, in fact, an actual recording studio known as the Record Plant. The studio's walls are covered with knobs, which, in reality, form a massive, custom-built Moog electronic synthesizer called TONTO. TONTO was featured on albums by the pioneering electronica duo TONTO expanding headband and still exists today. It can be seen on permanent exhibit at the National Music Center in Calgary, Alberta, Canada and is available for use by any artist. His unique details add depth to the story of Phantom of the Paradise and highlight its lasting impact on cinema and music history. As we draw the curtains on this cinematic journey through the enigmatic world of Phantom of the Paradise, I invite you to pause and reflect on the unique imprint this 1974 masterpiece has left on your cinematic soul. Much like the mysterious and haunting melodies of Winslow Leach's music, this film has woven itself into the tapestry of our memories, leaving an indelible mark that stands the test of time. Perhaps you recall the first time you witnessed the tragic transformation of Winslow Leach into the vengeful phantom. Or maybe it was the electrifying performances of the glam rock sensation beef that had you on the edge of your seat. And let's not forget the siren-like allure of Jessica Harper's Phoenix, whose voice could melt even the iciest of hearts. Phantom of the Paradise is a movie that transcends generations, a cult classic that has struck a chord with audiences around the world. Whether you are a devoted fan or a newcomer to this timeless tale, I encourage you to share your favorite memories, thoughts, or insights about the film. What emotions did it evoke in you? Did it inspire your love for music or ignite your passion for cinema? In the spirit of the Phantom himself, who yearned for recognition, let your voice be heard. Share your connection with Phantom of the Paradise with fellow enthusiasts, and ignite conversations that celebrate the magic of this cinematic gem. Thank you for allowing me to accompany you on this journey and for sharing your thoughts and memories. Your engagement breathes life into the stories we treasure. Until next time, remember that the Phantom's haunting melodies will forever echo in the chambers of your soul. Stay passionate about the cinema that moves you with gratitude and admiration.